In this video, I want to show you how to program up a realistic sounding acoustic hi-hat loop. This technique will be building off of the various different things we've covered in the previous videos. And you'll actually notice that there's quite a bit of similarities between programming something like this acoustic hi-hat and programming the shaker that we programmed in the previous video. And this is great because you can start to use all of these different techniques together to make just about any percussion loop that you need. So first, to create our realistic sounding hi-hat, we need to use a sample or a sample library that's going to allow us to create that as easily as possible. So what I recommend using here is gonna be something called a round robin sample library. Basically what this is, is inside of a multi-sample, say for example, like some sort of drum sampler, like contact, um, you can even have round robins, I think in battery and native instruments. Basically what happens is as you press a single key, it's actually cycling through four to five various different versions of that same hi-hat at that same velocity. And there's subtle differences between each of those different recordings and that creates a much more natural sounding tone. So here we're gonna be using a free instrument. It's called Labs. It's from Spitfire Audio is the manufacturer. So if you just go on the internet and look for Spitfire Audio Labs, uh, then this sample library will pop up. And specifically, you're looking to download the percussion library which on mine is gonna be the default, but it just depends on which ones you have loaded up. I'm gonna go percussion, and you're looking for this percussion library right here. You can also use any of the Native Instruments drum sample libraries. Reason also has some good acoustic drums as well, and they're one of their rack extensions. And then like Addictive Drummer also has some really great hi-hats as well. So it just depends on the style of hi-hat you're going for. I just wanna use something that's really great and free, so that way it's easy for you to follow along in any DW that you're working in. I mean, by the way, this actual sample library has tons of different expansions that are available for free as well for a lot of really great orchestral stuff. There's a lot of cool things you can do with this. So I definitely recommend checking out Labs if you haven't ever used any of their stuff before because there's some really fantastic sample libraries within this. So basically what this is, is a bunch of different sounds. So it's a bunch of different percussion bits and we're looking for this hi-hat. So what the interesting thing about this is because it is that round robin, you can hear it cycling through different samples. So as I play this back, so even though I'm pressing that exact same velocity, you can hear it's playing slightly differently each time I hit a note. That's because it's cycling through various different recordings as I play my key. And that's one of the things that's gonna make this hi-hat sound a lot more authentic. So basically that's all we're gonna do for that hi-hat. We're just gonna go ahead and leave it on its default state. But feel free to explore around within that plugin that's some of the advanced controls. But for us, we're just gonna keep it super simple. We'll just leave it as default. So I'll go ahead and create a new MIDI clip. By the way, we're at 118 beats per minute. Shift, Command, and M is gonna create that MIDI clip. And then we're gonna go down to the hi-hat, which I believe is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back to 100 on the velocity. I'm gonna turn on the little headphone icon, make sure that we are at the, uh, make sure we're at the hi-hats. So it's at F sharp one. Okay, perfect. And then we're gonna go ahead and just draw in a bunch of 16th notes. So my grid is set to 16. I'll go ahead and create my pencil tool by hitting B on my keyboard. And I'll literally just draw in a bunch of different notes. We'll fix that velocity here in a moment because right now it's set to a lower velocity. So then I'll go ahead and select everything. And then in Ableton, you could just type in the velocity value. So I'll go ahead and type in 100 and it'll put those all at 100. So right now it just sounds like this. So you can hear that round robin sample library happening. There's that subtle variation between each of those samples, but right now it still feels very programmed. So what we're gonna do is add in just a little bit of timing variation first. So I'm gonna select all of these individual notes. We're gonna shorten these up just a little bit like we did in the last video with the shaker. And then what I'm gonna do is have every other beat be slightly off. And I want to do this manually, so that way it's not just repeating itself perfectly. There's a little bit of a subtle variation happening in between those notes. Because again, in this case, we're trying to emulate an actual player. So that's how we're going to do so. So I'm going to select this note right here. And we're going to go ahead and drag it over just slightly. And actually, if we were to add a lot of swing, listen to what this sounds like. Let me drag that over. We don't want quite this much, but... So that's giving it that kind of offbeat rhythmic swing. Obviously, we don't want quite that much. I'm just looking for a touch of variation here. We'll go ahead and click on that and drag each of those individual notes just about the same. I don't want to be perfectly on the grid here. I don't want to have them all be exactly the same. I want a little bit of that variation. 
just so it feels a little bit more natural, like it was actually a played loop. You can even hear on that example, whenever I added in a ton of swing and had them be very off the grid, it actually still sounded nice. It just depends on the type of record you're going for. But for this case, I want something that sounds more real, but it's not super swung. Okay, perfect. That's starting to sound a ton better. And then we need to go ahead and program up our velocity. And this is where the real character of my loop is going to come in. So much like we did with that shaker, we need to decide which beat we want to accent. Let's go ahead and just listen to those drums to kind of find this out. So this is just a simple kick and snare pattern I put in here. So I think with this, I want something a little bit more driving because it's almost got like a more of either like a synth wave feel or like a pop rock feel. So I'm going to go ahead and accent that downbeat, which is going to be this first beat right here. So I want to have that one be the loudest, and then these other ones are going to be quieter than that main beat. So if you think about how an actual player would play this hi-hat pattern, they would start with that downstroke that's going to be the loudest hit, and then there would be some little articulations happening in between that, kind of rolling the hi-hat, and then you know on each of those downbeats you'd have that bigger hit. So let's kind of emulate that with our velocity. So we'll have it go down in volume, and then up in volume, but again, it's still quieter than that main one. Let's go and extend this just a little bit. And it depends on how like swung you want this to be. So you could have this be really quiet in comparison. So it just depends. I think this sounds quite nice. Maybe like just something like that. And then we'll go ahead and just emulate that again. I don't need those to be perfectly all the same. Again, because we're trying to emulate an actual player. The only one that I want to be exactly the same uh, velocity is going to be that downbeat. And I'll just go through and create each of those individual velocity changes. And then we'll go ahead and listen back to it and see if we want to go in and adjust anything. I think these ones in the bottom are a little bit too quiet. It almost sounds like it's kind of stopping the hi-hat just a little bit. So let's all select those and bring them all up in volume just a little bit. That already sounds a ton better. So just by changing up some of the ways that we go by programming up our loops, we can really add in a ton of articulation and flavor. So we have that offbeat swing, and then we have this pretty extensive velocity curve that's happening here, and that just adds in tons of shuffle to my pattern. From there, we can go ahead and play around with some processing to decide exactly how our hi-hat is going to sit inside of our mix and to kind of give it a little bit more snap. So let's go ahead and jump into some processing. So the first thing that we will use is the transient shaper. I'll just type in SPL. And we're looking for the transient designer plus. And I'm going to use this to go ahead and shorten up the sustain to make my hi-hat a little bit snappier. Alternatively, if you have this in a sampler where you can edit things quite a bit, as we'll say, for example, like Native Instruments Contact or something like that, you can actually go through and edit some of those samples with some decay curves. But in our case, we don't have that because the labs is a little bit more of a simple interface. But we can use that transient shaper to tighten this up. So we'll just drop that sustain down. And kind of pick our sweet spot here. Just makes that a little bit snappier. So that value is at just below negative six. Actually, I'll probably go ahead and put that up to negative six, so that was not quite as extreme. And then that's going to be our first effects of ice. From there, I want to add in a little bit more of like a vintage flavor and also some additional modulation and movement. If we think about an acoustic hi-hat, there's actually quite a bit of pitch articulation happening with that drum because you can change how tightly the two sections of hi-hat are closed together, and you can kind of change the pitch of that hi-hat and the general tone of it, depending on how you have that set. So there's a lot of subtle articulations that actual drummers can do to their hats to make them feel a little bit more natural and organic. So we're going to add in some pitch modulation and movement with an effects device. So the one that we're looking for is going to be the warble. I'm going to load that up. 
Let's go to modulation and the Neo Warble, part of the Plugin Alliance stuff. And this has basically, think of it like a tape machine plugin. It's a bunch of different things happening here. We have some distortion and then some wow and flutter, which is some pitch modulation movement and also some volume modulation. So the first thing that we'll adjust is the wow. I'll go ahead and turn that up so you can hear exactly what it's doing. Go, go back to the beginning here. I want to take that and I want to slow that down just a little bit by adjusting the speed. And then we're just going to have just a little bit of that. And that's adding just a little bit of that movement into my signal. Push the flutter all the way up. And here it's almost introducing that weird like phasey pitch modulation and everything. We'll have that be quite a bit slower. And then we want quite a bit less of that. So like 10 to 15 percent, nice, 13.2. And then let's use this as a saturation device. So I'll go ahead and crank the age all the way up just to show you what it sounds like. Gives you like kind of this lo-fi filtered feel without it. We don't want quite that much. So I'm going to go ahead and put that at like 70%. A little bit more dirt kind of darkens up the hi-hat giving it more of like a vintage tone which in this case because it kind of have like these synth wave drums it sounds quite nice let's turn those off for now and then we can go ahead and chop out some lows with the low cuts we're just basically using that kind of like an equalizer so there's not like an extended low range inside of my sample Maybe reduce the flutter a touch more. Okay, that's starting to sound super nice. Um, and we can go ahead and leave the resonance at its default location, by the way, uh, which is what this little uh, adjustment does. The resonance is set to 1.06, which in our case sounds nice on our sample, so we can leave that as is. But if you want to go in and adjust that, you do have that option. And the last thing that we can do to go ahead and kind of stick with that uh, vintage flavor for everything. Let's go to the console emulations and I'm going to pull in the Brainworks SSL 4000 E channel, which is going to be this plugin right here. This emulates a SSL 4000 E mixing desk and it actually sounds super nice, really great EQ section and also compressor and everything. The first thing we want to do on this is go over this virtual gain. If I crank this all the way up, you can hear there's this noise being added into everything. I'm going to go ahead and just turn that down. So that way now we don't have any of that noise. It's not actually affecting the input gain or anything like that. It's basically just like an internal gain control to set how much noise you want happening. In our case, I don't want any of that noise. Add a little bit more total harmonic distortion. Which I'll just add in a touch more distortion from this emulation here on the mixing desk. Because it is emulating like an analog mixing console. Then really all we're looking to do here is just add a little bit of top end. Let's go ahead and crank that up. And then I want to move this down until I start to get some of those upper mid-range frequencies on my hi-hat. So like 1.8 sounds really good. So it's just adding a nice brightness and a nice top end. And then let's go ahead and put the low shelf all the way down to 30 and then do like negative three decibels or so. So that way we're chopping out some low end frequencies. And that's just gonna go ahead and brighten up my hi-hat, especially to match those really snappy drums that we have. I'm just gonna provide a little bit more brightness and top end. So altogether, my hi-hat loop sounds like this. And then with the drums, sounds like this. So this shows you how to program up realistic sounding acoustic hi-hat loops, and you could use any sample library you'd like here using these techniques. You can actually create your own acoustic hi-hat loops that you could then resample or add into your productions. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.